Hey everyone, so today we're going to try to understand how correlation among different assets in your portfolio affect total portfolio variance. So just like in our last video, we're pooling our data from Quando. We're going to be looking at two data tickers today, Apple and Nike, for the time period of 2000 to 2018. And we already have our weightings of 75% to Apple and assuming a 25% weighting to Nike. We already created our covariance matrix here. And the only difference from the last video is that we created a data frame and we called it DS. And it's just the daily percentage changes. So let's try to understand this. So portfolio variance. First, I want to simplify this function. If you remember in our last video, we have two of the same terms here. Weight one times weight two times the covariance between two S returns. And also weight two times weight one times a two times the covariance between the two S returns. And we can actually simplify that just by multiplying by two. We can also simplify this weight one times weight one and squaring that to find weight one squared. And same with weight two times weight two and squaring that. We also have this covariance variable here where we can simplify that to just correlation. And remember in our last videos, we learned about correlation is just equal to the covariance between two asset returns divided by the product of their standard deviations. And we can solve for covariance and find that covariance is just equal to the correlation of two asset returns multiplied by the product of their standard deviations. So we can plug that in here like so, and we'll have a new portfolio variance function that looks like this with correlation as an input. And this just makes it a little more intuitive to understand how correlation amongst the assets affect the total portfolio variance, and we can manipulate the correlation. So we're going to do that. So now what we need to do is we need to calculate the standard deviation. And we're going to just take our DF, or data frame, and we're just going to apply the standard deviation function, like so. Now we have our standard deviations. Now we need to calculate the correlation. And to do that, all we can do is just take the correlation of Apple between, and like so, using the dot core function, between the correlation with Nike. I'll run that. And there we go, we have about a 0.25 correlation. Now we can actually apply this in our function. So to do that, we're gonna call this PVAR, and that's just gonna be equal to our weighting. And we can just take our weight of Apple. And remember our weight of Apple is 75%, so we're just gonna take AAPL, and we can just square that. And there we go. And now we can multiply that by the standard deviation or the variance of Apple. And remember to find the variance of Apple, we can just take our standard deviation of Apple and we can square that as well. So now we have the first term here in our function. Now we're going to do the second term. So our second term is just take the weighting of Nike and we'll square that. Nike and we'll square that. And we'll multiply that by the variance of Nike. We'll take a standard deviation again. Squaring standard deviation is the variance. We finally have our second term. And finally, we'll just do our, our last term here. And it's just this two times the weight of Apple times the weight of Nike. Finally, we'll just multiply it by our correlation. I'm just going to throw it in here, 0.25. We'll change this later. We will change this later. And finally, multiply it by the standard deviation of Apple multiplied by the standard deviation of Nike. So we'll run that, hopefully that works. And there we go. So we have the portfolio variance. And of course we can just find the square root of this. And to do that, we'll just say mp dot square root of our p bar. Variance, and there we go. There's our standard deviation. Of course, we can just annualize this to do that. We're just going to say annual portfolio standard deviation is just equal to R. And let's say this is portfolio standard deviation is just equal to our portfolio standard deviation times mp dot square root of 250. Remember for 250 trading days in the year. And there's our annualized portfolio standard deviation. And finally, now let's move on to, we're gonna to try to understand a programming concept and another function here. And so we're gonna learn about something called LinSpace. So now we're gonna to try to look at how correlation affects portfolio variance. So we're gonna use this function called LinSpace and I'm just gonna write it out and explain it in a second. So what is this doing? So LinSpace is just taking, is outputting an array, a NumPy array. In Python, we call this a list of 10 elements. 
from negative 1 to 1. If this was a 5, it would give us 10 elements from negative 1 to 5. Of course, we are trying to have a proxy for correlation from negative 1 to 1, and we're going to use this as an input into our portfolio variance. So now we're going to use something called a for loop. And if you're not familiar with a for loop, it's just we're iterating or we're looping through, we're going to loop through these variables, this, this list here. So to do that, we're going to say for core in mp.lin space, negative one to one, 10. So for each of these elements here, we're gonna do something. So for negative one, we'll do something. For negative 0 0.77, we'll input that and do something. So that thing that we're gonna do, that something is this function or equation that we just wrote out. So I'll plug that in there. And we're gonna place 0 0.25 with, uh, with core. Now for each correlation, negative one, we'll plug it into this equation. For negative 0 0.77, we'll plug it in this equation and so on and so forth. So We'll output that, and this is going to be portfolio of R. But remember, we want to annualize this, and we want to get the standard deviation of this and annualize it. So we're going to say um, mp dot square root of p var to get the variant to get the standard deviation, and then we're just going to multiply it by mp dot square root um, two hundred fifty two hundred fifty trading days in the year, and we're going to call this portfolio standard deviation. And this just to come up with the same convention, we'll say annual portfolio standard deviation is equal to that. And if you ran this, nothing's going to happen. What we would like to do is we want to append this to an empty list. And we're going to call this empty list P vol for just portfolio volatility. And what we're going to do is for each of these values, we're going to append it to this list, P vol list. So I'm going to append this annual portfolio standard deviation into there. And we'll output this like so. Hopefully this works. And there we go. So what is this doing and how can we interpret this? So you notice when we plug in negative one into our equation, we get a much lower portfolio variance versus when we have a strong linear positive relationship between Apple and Nike and we assume that we get a much higher portfolio variance. So that's portfolio variance and how correlation amongst assets affect it in a nutshell. If you like this video, please subscribe. In our next videos, we're going to build out an efficient frontier and finally figure out what an optimal portfolio for someone is. So till next time, thank you.